Hey everybody, it's TJ with Shopbot Tools. Today we're going to be looking at copying arrays. And these are real useful things that will make you a lot more efficient while you're designing your projects. We'll look at the array copy. When we do so, we'll be using the Marble Puzzle project. We're going to look at circular copy and we'll be showing that on a towel hoop. And finally, we'll be doing copying along vectors, which will show you that on a canoe project. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Today's tutorial is going to be using the Vectric software, and you may be using VCart Pro or you may be using Aspire. Either one is going to work fine. And where we'll be concentrating today is down here on the bottom side of this, where underneath offset and layout. And we're going to be looking at the second, third, and the fourth one. Some of you may be familiar already with the last one here, which is called nesting. And nesting is a way of taking an object and bringing it in and nesting it into your current job. The problem I find with nesting sometimes is it doesn't do it as as uniform of a way as an array does. So sometimes you know where it jumps around like this what I'm actually going to be able to do with an array copy is I'm going to be able to set this up and have as many rows and columns and have them lined up with the exact spacing in between those. So let's look at this first one right here which is array copy. So I click on Array Copy, and here we go. We just need to set, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just fill it in. Uh, I just, it's asking for my object size, so I can do a selection over the vectors that I want to array. It's asking me now how many rows in the Y and columns in the X. Uh, I'm just going to take a guess right at the beginning here, and I'm going to go 6 by 6. I have the option of doing spacing in between the vectors, so it would be in between my part or I could do an offset which is from the left hand side of each part so you would need to know your parts width plus the spacing that you want in there and sometimes you may need this depending on the way you want to array it so I'm going to stick with the gap on this one and just to keep it very simple for this example I'm going to go ahead and give it a one inch by one inch spacing Something that they have added in these last couple features of this software is symmetry, where I can go in here and I could change the rotation of that part. So if I wanted my parts to actually be rotated from each other, I could have it so every four of them, they all rotate so they are fa facing each other. All dep it's, it's totally up to you and the placement that you want. You can also group these and add a row column displacement. Let me go ahead and hit copy so you can see what it is exactly I'm doing. And what I've done here is now, as I've arrayed this, six rows by six rows with a one-inch spacing in between, because that's exactly what I set it to do up here. The other thing that I've also asked it to do was rotate it. So you can see by the symmetry here that I was able to rotate those parts. So by rotating the symmetry where it's doing the pocket cut here for this little slot, it now has that one opposing this, where if I was to undo that and change those back, they would all be facing upwards like that bottom row. So again, just something that you can play with. Um, clearly right now I have too many columns and rows. I could do an edit undo and I could uh, s switch that down to five by four, or I can just do a quick select, hit delete, select, hit delete, and I'd play with my spacing. For something like this, I'd probably leave a nice border, at least a one inch border all the way around this so I could have room for my screws or for my vacuum. And I'd go ahead and accept my array copy. And just as quickly as that, I was able to array those puzzle pieces into my workspace. All right, this example here is called a circular copy. And it just happens to be that we're using smaller circles and arraying them in a circular pattern around this towel hoop. Here you can see them being cut, the circles over here. There's the three parts cut out. And then finally, you can see if I zoom in close, that these circles have been arrayed in a circular pattern. Now, these smaller vectors don't have to be circles. These ones can actually be any shape, and you'll see this in the software. But what they are being done is they're being arrayed and evenly spaced along a circular pattern, where our last example was along a straight line, which was a linear pattern. So let's take a look at the file for this. All right, for the third one over here, if I hover on this one, it says that it is the circular copy. Create a circular array of copies. And what I have down here on the towel hoop that we saw in the picture was a bunch of circles, 
that need to be arrayed evenly along this larger hoop. So in the circular copy, I literally just follow along again with what the Vectric software is showing me. Selected object size. If I don't have that selected, here's my center circle. Rotation center. And uh, do I want to rotate copy? So notice here that in the picture, if this was not a circular item, maybe this was a rectangular item or oblong here, what you could do is you could actually have the copies rotate just like it does in the picture here. So it doesn't going to show here because we're using a circle. However, if you had something that had that was not perfectly round, you would see that it could rotate the copies as well. And if you didn't want it to, and you uncheck that, notice that it keeps them all lined up. Awesome feature. Overlooked, but very useful. So rotation center. To find that, instead of typing it in, here's what I like to do for the rotation center. If I double click on my image, on my vector, and I double click on the center, it makes my center, there's my rotation point, which is that larger set of circles. I want that rotation center to be in the center of this bigger circle. So I'm literally going to just double click on that, it brings it up, I hold my mouse key over it, I hold my left mouse key down, and now I'm just going to pan this down until I find the center of this green circle here. So I'm finding my green circle, I want to find the center of that, and then boom, it will line that up right there, and when it shows that it's lined up, I drop. And if your little features like that aren't popping on for his lineup, you just need to come up here and turn them on. So now that I have my center in the spot that it needs to be for the rotation angle, uh, rotation center, I now pick how many copies I want. And I'm going to just say I'd like 20 in here. Or, you know, just guessing right now what that would look like. And again, do I want this to be along the total angle or a step angle? So if I wanted to set it up Per degree here and again I can have my objects grouped or ungrouped depending on what my option is grouped is going to lock them all together and ungrouped is going to have them so they can still individually be edited so when I hit copy you can see what it did it put 20 of those circles with the perfect spacing in between all of them if you're looking at spacing distance instead of item number of distance we'll cover that one next but for right now you can see if I didn't want that 20 I could hit control Z for edit undo and say I wanted exactly two dozen and I can hit copy and all that does was it makes them go a little bit closer together since there are more but it does evenly space those all the way around when I use that circular copy my gold line here was nothing more than a layout line I could turn that layer off or I could delete that line since I no longer need it. And there are my lines there for my, there is my full project for the circular copy. So the next one we're going to look at is looking at a canoe. Uh, this is copy along vectors. So a way, one method of building canoes is called stitch and glue, where what they do is they drill these holes all along the different parts that are going to be glued together and you use a zip tie or a, a wire tie or something to to hold these canoe parts loosely in place until you're able to have say you know glued fiberglass whatever epoxy the joints together so coming up with all these hole locations would be a little bit tricky so here's an example of how we would go ahead and do something like that and this is just the canoe that's been drawn in place. I would grab the vector that I want to do my copy along. And for this one here, since I don't want to actually copy along the actual vector, I want it inside of this vector because um, I want the holes to be inside of my, my cutout because I need them to have some strength to them. So you can see right here, this is this is what I'm trying to get at right here. What you see right here is what I'm trying to do. So with that being said, I need to do an offset. And I'm going to offset in from this vector uh, around a quarter of an inch here. So I will offset in a quarter of an inch. And there is my new offset line. 
and then what I would need to do first is I would actually need to come in and draw my first circle since I'm just going to use these little zip ties I'm going to go ahead and just draw an eighth of an inch diameter hole that I can just drill with my eighth inch end mill so there's my eighth inch hole right there you can see that in place and instead of sitting here and clicking and putting these all the way around if I click on this fourth one over copy along vectors copy first object along remaining vectors I can click on this and am I copying object or am I copying circles so it depends on the type of operation it is that you want to do in this example I want to copy the object I want to select the object I want to copy which is this one and followed by one or more vectors to create so if I had all of these parts ready to go I could just hit hold the shift and do them all since I'm just going to show you this one right here, if I hold the shift key down, select the next vector, what I now come in is I have the option to do number of copies, which would be you know how many circles that I want. I don't know exactly how many. I just know right around four to five inches is what I would want to have for my spacing. So my zip ties could go in there and hold this thing in a stable place. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to switch this to five inches force even spacing so meaning that it's forcing the even spacing it is going to nudge these in and out a little bit from your exactly five inch and you have some options down here align objects to the curve which we want to do create copies on a new layer if we wanted to put them on a new layer so we could make them easily ready to toolpath we could do that and if we needed to reverse the direction if we didn't like the way they copied we would just select reverse direction when I hit copy you can see it calculating along the bottom because it's doing quite a process here and there we go every five inches now is an eighth inch hole all along that canoe on both sides of it there we go and I would just repeat this process for the bottom and the right hand side and the left hand side of those panels as you can see that it was done over here and that would be a way to copy along vectors and it sure made that a lot easier laying out all those holes on there we hope today's training was able to be helpful for you and any upcoming projects that you have remember underneath the offset and layout we looked at these three options right here array copy in a lineal way a circular array and then we also copied along vectors so if you found today's useful, you may want to check out ShopBot's website, shopbottools.com slash training slash tutorials for more tutorials like this, both in the software and out on the machine. And if you're looking for more of learning about just the Vectric software, uh, you can go to support.vectric.com slash training dash material, and they've got plenty of tutorials on there as well. So thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time.